Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be updating you with some of the cool new features we've added in iClone 6.3. With we can see this uh, brand new phone sexy teacher type that we're talking about. We hope we can give users more freedom and customizing their This is just the project there. I'm going to be using just to show you an example of the cool new features that we've added. Uh, we've listened to your feedback and given you some of the stuff that you've uh, most requested. So first thing we're going to talk about is the timeline. So to go into our good old timeline, we can press the F3 hotkey. And we can double click on the timeline to dock it and uh, float it like this or double click again to dock it back here. But you may notice that now we have two separate playheads. And this whole space right here is kind of wasted because we have the playheads right here and our timeline is open. So what we can do now is we have the ability to show or hide the playhead right here. And that gives us a lot more screen real estate to work with. So it's really useful if you're doing some camera work and stuff. You want to see the whole screen, but you want, to, uh, you want your timeline to remain docked. This gives you a bit more uh, breathing space here. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, regardless of where you are, where you've clicked in the scene, if I go to preview camera, I'm over here. I go to like frame 100 or whatever and I click on my character. If I press the left and right directional keys, now I can move frame by frame through my project using my left and right directional keys. So that's a cool little new feature that we've added, global directional keys. And say, for example, uh, many, many of you may not know this, it's not really a new feature, but say, for example, I'm over at frame like 520, for example, and I go over to uh, this part of my timeline, I've just opened it up, and I want to go to my current frame, I can simply just click current frame, and that'll center my uh, timeline around the playhead right there. So again, just go over here, do, 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 click current frame, we're back here. So that's a pretty cool uh, feature that, not really new, but a lot of people don't know about that, so I'll just uh, decide to throw that in there. Now we also have the ability, for all of you who love to do the lip syncing and uh, lip sync editing, we now have the ability for audio scrubbing. So I'm going to open up my characters, uh, standard characters visine track right here. You can click on that track to open up your characters visine track and twirl it open. So you can see we have the audio waveform data right here as well as the phonem uh, keyframes. So now we have the ability to click down here or click up here, I guess, and now see what our character is saying at what point in the timeline simply by scrubbing through the timeline. So previously we had to play back and kind of uh, you know stop it where we wanted to replace the uh, vising keyframes, but now we can scrub the audio. Okay. So audio scrubbing is a really useful uh, tool, especially for those of you who like to do the uh, lip sync editing and stuff like that. All right, so let's move on to the animation then. Uh, we'll actually just press the F3 hotkey and bring up that uh, playhead again there. As for animation, we now have the ability to keep, uh, remove all of our scene animation and keep the current frame, keep the last frame and keep the first frame. So if we uh, want to, you know, say separate, for example, separate this uh, project here into three uh, smaller projects. If you have a massive project, we want to separate into three smaller projects. Maybe each one has its own camera view and stuff like that. We now have the ability, say for example, right here at frame like one, 190 or something. We'll just stop there. See, for example, I wanted to start a new project, but I wanted that project to start at this point right here. Let's go to our uh, camera just so we can get an example here. So say, for example, I wanted my second project to start at this frame. Well, previously, if we remove the scene animation, we could go to animation and remove scene animation. We had the ability to keep the first frame. Okay, but that would remove all the animation and take us all the way back to the first frame. Now we have the ability to keep the last frame and the current frame. All right, so say for example, I'm right here and I press F3 and go into my timeline. You can see that uh, I have my character looking at the camera. Let's open up her uh, track actually here, the constraint track, so we can see that our character is looking at the camera. I want to emphasize that uh, right here, the character is looking at the camera. This is a look at constraint right here. We uh, twirl that down, we can see the look at constraint uh, going on over here. Now, if I remove the scene animation, but I keep uh, this frame, what's going to happen? I can go to animation and remove scene animation and keep current frame. So that's going to remove all the animation from my character, including her lip sync, but she's going to maintain this look at right here. And all of the, all the constraints, all the IK, all the last status, that's going to be baked into this frame. So now if we scrub through our timeline, it's going to remain at that point. And then we can continue on here with like say project two, for example, this project is called teach two. We can start now teach three and start a new camera angle from that uh, point right there. 
Uh, my friend Adolf Navarro has uh, created a little diagram that he kindly sent to me because he was one who requested this feature. So say, for example, in this case, you want, you know, three separate small projects. Um, each project has its own camera. So you have your camera one starting from here, goes to like frame one to frame 800, for example. And then you want the action to like continue on, but with camera two. And you want it to be in a separate, smaller, more manageable project. Then you can have like camera two project and your character can be running from here. And you can, you know, stop the current animation, remove all the scene animation at this point, and then start project two and then go on from this point here, and so on and so forth. So that's really useful for those of you who have like multiple projects and you know want to kind of put them into smaller, more manageable sizes. All right, so let's move on to a new project. I'm gonna show you a sort of new project here. I'm going to bring in our boy Christian here, and I'm gonna demonstrate some of the uh, new animation features that have to do with the motion layer editing tool in particular. All right, so let's apply an animation to uh, Mr. Uh, Christian here. Let's go to motion into uh, G6 motions. Let's just give him a, uh, oh, that's the female. Let's go to G6 male motions here. Let's just give him an idle, uh, Mason's idle right here. So uh, previously, when you're using the, uh, let's move this little, let's move this a little bit over here. Uh, previously, when you were using the edit motion layer tool, you had the option to, uh, you know, have the bone edit mode on or off, just like you do now, but it never remembered your preference. So if we turned it off, um, it would, uh, we could close it down, and if we went back into edit motion layer, this would return to back to the on state, and you would have to like click it to turn it off every time. Now it remembers your preference. Uh, personally, I don't like to have this bone edit mode on, so I can just, uh, you know, click over here and, you know, move my character's arm that way. So that's kind of, uh, you know, handy. We don't have to click this bone edit mode anymore on and off. And speaking of the edit motion layer tool, let's bring in, uh, Christian's best friend, his little, uh, cat. Let's go to our props. And this is talking about prop and non-human motion clip reset, which we didn't have before. I'm going to explain this here. Let's open up a, or let's bring in a prop, a 3D live prop. Let's bring in this kitty cat right here. So there's a Christian's kitty cat friend. Let's right click on the cat and give it a perform menu. Give it this uh, idle motion right here. So our cat will start looking around. So this is a uh, non-human character. I can do the same thing for a prop. But uh, when it comes to motion layer editing, so say for example, uh, this point here when our cat was uh, bringing its paw up like this, say for example, we wanted the paw to go up a little bit further. Well, we could use the edit motion layer tool there. Uh, we can turn on bone edit mode, select our cat's arm right there, press the E hotkey and rotate it further upwards. And then say for example, at the same frame, we wanted to rotate the tail upwards. And then we wanted to take the neck and move it upwards as well. So our cat's posing like this, strike a pose. All right, previously we didn't have the option to reset it back to the original motion clip data. So if I press F3 and I go into the timeline and I open up my cat's animation track right here, this is the idle perform that I added to my cat. If we press reset, for example, we can go from here and then say, for example, down here we press reset. That'll reset it back to the original clip data. And then we go from here, we can press a reset here and so then our cat brings its tail up like that strikes a pose and then returns back to its original idle like that all right so we didn't previously have that uh, opportunity or that ability to use the reset to original clip pose but now we have it so that's an awesome cool little feature for those of you who do non-human and uh, prop animation in addition to that we now have support for direct x9 uh, for those of you who don't have direct x11 However, with DirectX 9, there are a couple limitations. The hair is going to look a little bit different. It's not going to look as good as it would with DirectX 11. In addition to that, you will not have the ability to use real-time surface smoothing uh, on your characters. So DirectX 9 does not support that. Now for the final and coolest uh, new improvement to iClone 6.3, the ability to import RL heads from Crazy Talk 8, newly released Crazy Talk 8. To demonstrate this, I'm going to use our uh, our boy Christian right here. And if you go over to Crazy Talk 8, I've loaded up in our actor, 3D actor folder right here. I've loaded up uh, Gabriel. So what we want to do is we want to export Gabriel's, uh, R Gabriel as an RL head. We're just going to export his head uh, by going up here to export RL head, or else control H. You can also export to character creator as well, but we're going to export to an RL head format. Let's call it uh, uh, Gabriel real head okay 
very original naming right there. So that's going to save an RL head file to my desktop. And then what I can do is simply I can click and drag that onto my Christian character from the desktop. So if I go to my desktop, uh, let's close this uh, image down here. Let's uh, just close this down for now. Uh, we have this, uh, where to go, Gabriel head, RL head. So I can click and drag this onto my Christian character, or I can have my Christian character selected, go to edit, sorry, go to file and uh, import, and we can import that RL head that way as well. So clicking and dragging, or I can just have my character selected and import the RL head. And we can select import head morph and import head texture, and then just press OK. All right, and there's uh, Gabriel's head on Christian's body right there. You can see it looks a little bit different, obviously, but uh, it's different styles. So that's the way you can import RL heads to your iClone 6.3 characters. And then you can go to your avatar section right here to custom, go to head, and you can save it as your own custom head like here as well in iClone. So by pressing the plus button, we can call it uh, Gabriel, Gabriel head iclone you know i'm not very imaginative with my names today but that's about it so um that's about it for all the improvements to iclone 6.3 guys uh thanks for watching this video about all the things that we've uh, improved i also wanted to mention as well that we now support direct x9 so if you're a direct x9 user we can uh, you can now use iclone 6. however the hair will be a little bit different the quality of the hair will be a little bit different compared to the direct x11 users in addition to that, you won't be able to use the real-time surface smoothing function as well, so keep that in mind. But that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I'll catch you next time.